Nemausis One, a state-financed social housing project built in 1986 by Jean Nouvel. All the apartments were reserved for people on moderate incomes. In the 1980s, the mayor of Nîmes, Jean Bousquet, decided to develop the town and modernize it through architecture. Sixteen projects involving renowned architects were launched. The most ambitious project was the Mediathèque, which was to be built in the heart of the town, opposite the Roman Maison Carrée. In the competition for the Mediathèque, two entries stood out, that of Jean Nouvel, who was just putting the finishing touches to the Arabic Institute in Paris, and that of the renowned British architect Norman Foster, which was eventually chosen. But Bousquet was so impressed with Jean Nouvel that he gave him carte blanche on a new project of social housing to be built in a residential area close to the exterior boulevards, where, in the 1960s, the first housing project of the town had been built. The local authorities had purchased a large site previously occupied by an electric installations factory. Now only the tree-lined forecourt where the employees had enjoyed their breaks remained. Nemausis I consists of two long buildings which border this tree-lined forecourt. This has become the central greenery of the project, which both separates and unites two distinct buildings. The architect was not permitted to build an underground car park, the authorities having planned the forecourt for this purpose. But Jean Nouvel insisted on preserving the greenery of the forecourt. By digging down into the ground and raising the buildings onto concrete pillars, he managed to create an open-air car park that also protects vehicles from the elements. It's possible to see from one side of the estate to the other under the buildings. The two buildings appear to be identical, but they are not the same length, as Jean Nouvel had to adapt to the irregular shape of the site. Seen from the front, they have the same rounded bow-like heads. The treatment at the back is more brutal. The shorter building ends in a sloping wall. The longer in a vertical wall supported by two concrete walls in the shape of rudders. The walkways, the verandas, and the thin screen roof give the buildings the appearance of two large ships. Having a style means sticking to a formal system and reproducing it whatever the circumstances. In that sense, I don't have a style. For me, each building is a unique expression. What's important is that the building has strong identity, that you know where you are, that you know you're not in a neighboring building. With Nemausis I, I wanted to lay down the ground rules for social housing in the 1980s to get back to the old forgotten principles of space, light, and air. Space, light, and air. Clean, healthy, comfortable housing for the people.
These were the principles of social housing in France from the middle of the last century to Le Corbusier's Cité Radieuse. But architects were under pressure to meet the huge post-war demands for social housing, and quality had to make way for quantity. In 1950, new apartments were built smaller than in 1920, and in 1970, the biggest six-room apartment measured a mere 90 square meters. At Namausus 1, the smaller three or four room apartments measure between 90 and 110 square meters. The larger ones between 120 and 170 square meters. It is not only the surface area that is large. As the apartments are duplexes or triplexes, which is rare for social housing, they also represent large volumes of space. Namausus One makes a mockery of all those who associate social housing with rabbit hutches. Namausus One was designed from the inside out with the aim of giving people the maximum amount of living space. Space is a prerequisite of the aesthetic. A beautiful apartment is a large apartment. A beautiful room is a large room. The aim at Namausus One was to see if we could build apartments 30 or 40 percent bigger than usual for the same price. We had to decide on which side of the window to put the money, inside or out. To create more space for the same price, you must build the simplest, straightest lines possible. Reduced to the simplest level, the buildings of Namausus I are rectangular blocks. The parallel pipette block, which is most often found in the suburbs, as it is the cheapest way to build. Jean Nouvel simplified to the extreme. Along a concrete base, at regular intervals, he installed concrete walls, which are both the separating walls of the apartments and supports for the above floors. The gap between the walls is five meters, the space needed to park two cars side by side. From the bottom to the top, the building is based on this five-meter principle. The width of the apartments, the space between the beams that support the walkways, and the screen paneling of the roof. The only exception to this regularity is the central elevator well, which splits the building in two. It allows the architect to play with transparency and produce plunging views. But it is also consistent with the construction principles in Namausus I, where all the collective parts of the building are placed on the outside. Ways allowing access to the apartments are joined onto the facade. There are three levels of walkways accessed by large metal staircases. As the apartments take up several levels, Jean Nouvel needed to install only three levels of walkways on this five story building. The walkways are not only for access, 
they have also come to represent pedestrian streets, bikes, skateboards, and radio-controlled cars permitting. In a standard building, the elevator well, the walkways and corridors are built into the structure, complicating and raising the cost of construction and taking up a large amount of the volume. By placing all the access points outside, Jean Nouvel's gains were twofold, bigger savings and bigger apartments. The apartments stretch across the whole width of the building, from facade to facade. And to make them even larger, the architect extends them outside with verandas, built on the same level as the walkways on the north facade. Thus, each apartment gains an extra 15 square meters, which, in a building with neither cellar nor loft, is used more often than not as storage space. The walkways are on the north facades, the verandas on the more sunny south. Here, the reason for the metallic screen roof becomes clear, to create shade and to protect from the Mediterranean sun. It also stops a certain amount of wind and gives thermal isolation in winter. The roof harmonizes perfectly with the walkways and verandas, which slope like the protective barriers of a building site. Safety inspectors felt that the gradient of the barriers did not comply with safety requirements, but Jean Nouvel refused to change them. To bring them in line with the norms, he added perforated steel planks which reinforced the barriers and gave them more depth. The inhabitants have since found numerous uses for them. The architecture of social housing in the 1980s always stuck to the same model, the middle-class apartment. On the right, the little kitchen, on the left, the double glass doors of the living room, at the end of the corridor, the tiny bathroom with no natural light, all cozy and snug. Architects were not allowed to have an opinion on the apartments. We were told, that's the way it is, that's what people want. I wanted to rework the interiors to make them consistent with the way people really live.
Between the two concrete walls, the apartments have a single volume of space. On the lower level, the living room and kitchen are separated by a central block which contains the toilet, the water heater, and a walk-in cupboard. In each apartment, Jean Nouvel combines these three elements in a different way. Freedom of movement is permitted around the central block. There are no walls, no doors, no hallway. The kitchen looks out onto the walkway. There is no transition between the private and the collective. The upper level is given the same minimal treatment based on transparency. The only luxury is a large, naturally lit bathroom. which separate the apartment and the veranda can be completely folded back to let in light and fresh air. The wall is not really a wall, but four folding aluminum doors, a model originally manufactured for fire stations. Certain adjustments were necessary to meet the requirements of a private home. Maneuverability, stronger joints, soundproofing, and thermal insulation. The design and manufacture of these doors represented 8% of the total cost of construction. It's expensive for veranda doors, but cheap at half the price for a facade which can transform according to the needs or taste. The principle of using concrete walls as the only supports in the building allowed Jean Nouvel the freedom to add what prefabricated elements he liked to the facades. In other words, to play with a giant mechano set. On the north facade, which carries the walkways, the mechano is very economical. These are fiberglass wooden panels, which are then covered by corrugated aluminum. These are materials designed for hangars and factories. Namausus One are private homes built from an industrial assembly kit. I was looking for stylistic uniformity, a direct link with the industrial in the form of concrete walls, perforated steel steps and protection barriers. This industrial image represents the present assembly line nature of social housing. It's not only a question of volume, but also of tension and texture. Instead of thinking about fullness and emptiness on volume, the color of the stone or the marble, I was interested in reflection, background, colors, the night view, everything that relates to nuance to the way light changes with the weather or the time of day. At Namausus One, the first aim was to build more space for the same price. There was also a second, to offer inhabitants a living space more in line with the rules of a modern lifestyle.
Inside the apartment, Jean Nouvel's industrial furnishings didn't stop at the metal staircase and the wooden paneling. The apartments were delivered to the tenants with walls and ceilings in raw concrete. But this had nothing to do with finance, as a coat of paint would have cost next to nothing. It was a cultural choice, a deliberate choice of non-decoration. The apartments seem incomplete, and yet they are finished. The architect left the faults in the concrete exposed and even went as far as redrawing these mason's lines in each apartment. If you live in a home designed by Jean Nouvel, you're not allowed to tamper with it. The tenant is hereby informed that it is strictly forbidden to wallpaper the walls. But despite the difficulties of such large volumes of concrete, the occupants have nonetheless attacked, armed with carpets, wallpaper, and adhesive cornice. They have put up false walls, blocked off corridors, disguised the staircases, and hung curtains. They have chosen according to their means and tastes. And in this long-running battle with the architect, they are the victors. But in the utopia of Nemausus I, other than the restrictions on decorating, there are more serious consequences. Jean Nouvel won his battle to build apartments 30 to 50 percent bigger than usual for the same price. But the tenants, whose rents are calculated per square meter, are obliged to pay 30 to 50 percent more than in traditional social housing. Bigger means more expensive, more difficult to rent. A victim of social constraints, Nemausus I remains an impossible prototype. I don't mind being mistaken about my era. I'm not looking to build something timeless. All I want is that when people see Nemausus I, they recognize it as being from the 1980s.